Hey guys, Mr. Vestech here. Um, I'm in the process of selling off a little bit of my um, collection, just kind of downsizing and stuff like that. I have a lot of stuff that I don't have time to use or time to play. So, um, But I, 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 I remembered actually that recently, only recently, I purchased um, what I thought was a fully working 60 gigabyte model, um, launch model PlayStation 3, as you can see from opening the flap here. Um, in Europe, only the initial 60 gigabyte launch model uh, was backwards compatible with PlayStation 2 games, which is mainly the reason I bought it. I spent 50 euro on it, it turned out to be a dud. And unfortunately, I got it from a car boot sale. So it's not like I could bring it back for a refund. So what we're going to try and do today is we're going to try and repair it. Um, it's been repaired once before, as I can see from a repair sticker yeah. on the unit, so I'm not, not really hopeful that we can get it up and running. But we'll try our best anyway. Yeah, so if we try and turn it on, it tries to boot up. And then gives a quick yellow light and then a blinking red light. That usually means that there's something wrong with the CPU or the GPU in the unit. So we're going to take it apart and see if we can fix it. So, according to what I read online, um, for this fix you will need some Arctic Silver Thermal Paste, which I just actually happened to have lying around. And a heat gun, usually used for um, stripping paint off walls and getting rid of old wallpaper, stuff like that. So yeah, that's what you're going to need for this fix. Let's get started. Let's tear her down. So first things first, what we need to do is actually just take the hard drive out. So there's a little wedge here. You can just use like a flathead screwdriver. Pop that out. Um, there's a, just a normal Phillips screwdriver here. So we just unscrew that. And just take, take that out. I'm gonna just pull up this little flap here and take out the drive. It's pretty wet in there, but there we go. That's yeah, 60 gigabytes. Right, so let's continue with the rest of the teardown. So for this bit, just be aware, and for most of the taking apart of the PlayStation 3, that you will actually need a Torx 10 screwdriver bits. Now I need um, a pretty long one here because the hole is actually quite deep here. So, you just want to take out the screw anyway, and up. Oh, just got stuck. There she is. Just put it to one side. And then you want to pull this towards the hard drive bay, and then it just comes off. So that's that. We have various screws here that are all dotted along. But basically I'm going to speed up the video so that you can see me tearing this down. If you need a step-by-step -step guide, I'll put a, a link to it in the description. Okay, so at this point, we have the heatsink taken off. Uh, you can see the uh, CPU and the GPU right here. Um, there's a lot of thermal paste here. I'm surprised it's not as crusty as it probably should be. Um, after, I don't know, like seven years in use. But you want to clean this up. You can just use some tissue. If you have some isopropyl alcohol, use that to clean it up too. But tissue will do the job as long as you're not leaving bits of tissue behind. That's a bad idea. Um, so you want to go ahead and clean that up and then reapply the thermal paste basically. So we've stripped it down far enough to be able to see the CPU, the GPU and all of the kind of memory chips self-contained therein. At this point you're going to want to take out your heat gun. I'll show you exactly what to do. So basically. You've got your two processors here, and you can see the memory chips beside both processors there as well. That's basically the general area that we're going to want to heat up. Set your heat gun on a low setting. Uh, any kind of medium to high setting could be enough to cook the board enough for it to never ever want to work again. Um, and you don't want to go over the area for more than a couple of seconds at a time. So I'm going to start off just doing the memory chips here and here. You want to just go back and forth, keep heat gun in motion. You don't want to overheat anything for too long basically. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm just going to do it to the memory chips. You only want to do this for about 20 or 30 seconds. So as I said, keep it on a low setting. 
have it going for about five to ten seconds just give it some time to heat up and you just want to kind of go over the area in a kind of motion like this I'm going to hold it upright like that just so that you don't um, you know you're not setting fire to your table or anything whatever it is you happen to be working with so that should be should be long enough for those chips you want to move over to the ones over here then again just back and forth kind of circular zigzaggy back and forth like that and then we're going to want to spend about 20 to 30 seconds per processing chip so I'm going to start off with this one here again you don't want to stay in one location for too long that's the idea here your arm is probably going to get tired but it'll be worth it then we're going to move on to this chip over here again obviously parts of this video are sped up but do take your time no longer than 30 seconds per chip and then just kind of over the general area for a couple of seconds that should be it give that a couple of minutes for the board to cool down and then we're going to reapply the thermal paste and put everything back together okay so at this point we've given this some cool down time none of the chips feel too warm uh, or feel warm at all actually anymore uh, after about 15 to 20 minutes so what we need now is our arctic silver thermal paste now so what you want to do is you want to put it in the center basically it's like a little tiny little syringe uh, usually you can get bigger or smaller ones basically what you want to do is you want to put it in the middle and you want to put a fair dollop um, in the middle because basically the main chip is like here and here on both chips uh, so you want to put a fair fair dollop on there right about that size maybe a bit more than that and the same on the other chip Okay, so that should be enough. So basically, um, most of that tiny little tube is gone. Um, but that is, now well, you might look at it and think, well, the whole chip needs to be covered. Well, yeah, okay, but the main chip is in the middle there. And when you actually put the, the heat sink um, and everything back onto the unit, um, there it's going to get flattened and spread out. So it should be enough. So we're, we're going to start the reassembly now. So we're just going to speed our way through that, basically. And I'm going to put the new episode of Orange is the New Black back on my TV so that I can watch while I'm putting this back together. PlayStation 3 has been put back together and now it is the moment of truth. Does she want to power up again properly? Yes she does. She is working perfectly. There we go. Now let's try it out on the TV. Alright, so this is to be the moment of truth. Powering up. And there we go. It works. There you have it. That's how you repair a PlayStation 3 that has the yellow light of death. Thanks for checking out this video. If you liked the video, rate, comment, and please subscribe to the channel. You can click the subscribe link right up there. And you can check out these other videos that are along being suggested up along here somewhere. Thanks for checking out the channel, and um, good luck in repairing your own PlayStation 3, and I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to Mr. Vestek now. If you don't, I'll wreck you, mate. Swell me, mom.